Lab 42. And in the survey, we said rank in the order of importance location, brand, price, the frequency program, and oh, yeah, our product, Meet Me. Rank these things one through five. We came in second, which stunned me. I thought at best we'd come in third. The most important criteria to Xers, Yers, and Zers, who were the majority of the people that filled out these surveys, was price. They said price was number one. Brand loyalty was like fourth. Your program second. We would love to do that. You guys all Facebook, right? I'm of the firm belief that the ultimate Facebook, the ultimate social networking is when you can get face to face. And how cool would it be to send emails out to all those painters saying, hey, you want to have a cup of coffee, you want a cocktail, you want to meet in the lobby, you want to have breakfast, whatever, makes you feel comfortable. And they either respond or they don't. The ones that do, you set up a meeting and you have fun and you learn about painting. Take it a step further. You're sitting on an airplane seat and sitting next to you is another painter. That never happens for me. I never get to sit next to somebody I want to sit next to in an airplane, hardly ever. Now you get to choose. You would give us permission, but you land in Indianapolis and your passion is golf. You're a big time golfer, you love golf. Dick's Sporting Goods is sending you, with your permission, pushing messaging out to you that says, Hey, you just landed in Indianapolis. We have a sale going on on nine irons. Come on to Dick's Sporting Goods kind of thing. So now retail gets involved. Attractions get involved. Restaurants can get involved in this product. Free to the consumer. Hotel pays 9%, which is one point less than they pay a travel agent, and a lot less than they pay OTAs, online travel agency. The, tra the price lines of the world, uh, hotels.com, those are called OTAs, online travel agencies. Some of them are getting 20, 25, 30% commissions. Ours is nine. So it costs the hotel less to do business with us. We're also gonna have a sales force in our company, whoever we partner with, whatever brand or brands, where we go out to major associations. And I'm gonna stand up in front of ARP with 30,000 people in the audience and say, I've got five minutes with you. I wanna to talk to you about a product that can connect you to other seniors wherever and whenever you travel. And oh yeah, it's free to you. And the organization gets 1% from us for letting us have that opportunity, okay? So we think, we don't know what it's worth. We think there's, that, that thing is a home run, but it could be worth $8 or it could be worth $80 million. My job is to get all the brands to compete and bid and try to get this product and only then will the price rise, okay? So it remains to be seen how we're gonna do on that. But we've been working on that project for eight years. Every Saturday morning, 6 a.m., they're on 7 a.m. time, I'm on 6, we had a conference call to move this thing forward between copywriting and trademarking and trying to patent it, trying was the key word, it took time. That's why it took eight years. But we think the idea is solid. We'll see what happens. So that's in my life. And you people will all have those kinds of opportunities if you want them and you'll have a strong hospitality background that will help get you there. I'm getting calls all the time. Uh, BMW is a more recent one. Can you train our customer service people when you drove in to drive in to get your oil change? Customer service. Can you teach them how to be a concierge at a four-star hotel? Yeah, I think we can do that. Everybody out there wants hospitality training. You don't have to be in just a hotel. You can do hospitals, you can do assisted living. There's a lot of different opportunities to bring a hospitality education. So what you're getting is incredibly powerful, especially if you're working in a hotel. Now you've got the theory with practical, and you're getting experience in both. That's terrific. Any questions from anybody about anything? Go. So do you guys do like training, on, can you, like you want it online, or it's all like you go to hotels and like you teach them? So our question is, do you do face-to-face -face training or do you do online? Yes. All of it. I'm of the belief that if you want to teach people how to sell better, smarter, you want to teach them how to service at a higher level, you want to improve the culture, that's incredibly hard to do over the internet. Face-to-face -face initially is always the best way. We build credibility, we build trust. They figure out after eight hours of being with us in a classroom, these guys at Fresh Revenues have no hidden agenda. All they want to do is make us more money, so they trust us. But it takes that eight hours to get the trust. Now you can have distance education, which are web classrooms, 
live classrooms, you're a student uh, learning some stuff from us, and you have an opportunity to exchange back and forth, web classrooms. So, in the world of training, what we learned a long time ago with my first company was, if you want your training to succeed, you have to reinforce it. Meaning you have to have accountability and tracking and tied to incentives and coached and measured. If you don't do that, whatever it is you're working on, whatever initiative, will eventually fail. And it will fail miserably. With reinforcement, you keep everyone's face into it. You'll dip down once in a while when there's a lot of turnover, and you'll dip back up again so much faster because you're helping them reinforce it. So that's what helped us become from a $2 million company to a $50 million company with reinforcement. Okay. Yes? When building back up these companies, what's the biggest and hardest thing you've come across you would say? Egos. Okay. So let's take a particular client that's fresh. Last week I met with a university client, potential. We got the deal, but then it was still potential. And they have 12 deans in eight colleges. And the dean's responsibility, major responsibility, is to make presentations to alumni to get funds to invest in the colleges, okay? And the chancellor had an opportunity to watch one of the deans in action and was livid, was mortified. So that prompted them to go find us. So our job is to teach them how to present effectively. Well, egos being egos, every single person in the room is a PhD. I'm not, yeah. 40 PhDs. I'm fine, I know what I'm doing. Is this the thing over yet? That's what we're gonna run into. So the ego is the greatest challenge. What we do pretty well, not pretty well, I think pretty darn good, is we get buy-in. Whoever they are, we gotta get buy-in first. Why should I do this? What's it gonna do for me? How's it gonna improve things? How's it gonna make it easier? We gotta get that part. And only then do we stand a chance of getting this part right and then the words come out right. Too many training companies tackle this and this and forget this, you can't. When we're working with eight dollar an hour employees, how do you motivate them to do anything different, right? You gotta get this, and the way we do it is, what do you guys want to be when you grow up? And we'll go around the room, and people volunteer, I wanna be a teacher, I wanna be this, I wanna be that. Well, the skills you're learning at this front desk and in this hotel will help you be the teacher you wanna be. They, don't, they never thought of those terms. They thought they were just getting a paycheck until they found a real job. So. Hospitality is a great place to get a ton of experience. Egos, greatest challenge. Hidden agendas. Well, Don, you wanna do an assessment with these, these deans? We don't really want you to do, can't you just show up and teach them? No, I wanna know what's in their head, I wanna know what's in their heart, I wanna know what they're saying, I wanna know what they're doing. I wanna to talk to the people who have sat through the presentations and get feedback from them. You need to do your homework, so that when you do show up, it's not, hey, I got some ideas, no. I talked to a lot of you, and here's what I found, agree or disagree, and they're gonna agree because I already told them what I'm gonna say ahead of time when we met one-on-one. -on -one. So the client, the potential client said, no, I don't want you to touch my deans. Can't you just show up? I said, no, either we do the assessment or we don't do anything. So he caved and said, let's do it. Do you ever run into situations where right after you help build back up whatever organization is, they completely mess it all up again? I thought you were gonna go somewhere else. Let me tell you a story. Remember that story with Nancy Keaton? I had a 12 month contract. We're gonna make the million dollars net. It's November, contract expires at the end of December. Tom Ford calls me up the owner and he said, hey Dawn, man, we're doing great. You're gonna hit your million dollars. Um, can we stop paying you? <laughs> you mean like, we got a month to go and you wanna stop paying me? Yeah. If that's what you want, that's what you get. Oh, good, Don, thanks. Mm -hmm. So you hang up and you go, you do a bad job, you get fired. You do a good job, you get fired. <laughs> so that happens, okay? How much more time? You're done. Was that helpful? Raise your hand. I hope it was, because this was for you, not me, okay? Let's hear it for Don.